Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, we want to welcome our online friends with us this morning. And so anyways, uh, we are confident every time that we get together, we ask that God would do uh, two things, that he would uh, bring us together in one and that we would all hear and, uh, and receive a touch from the Lord today. We know that he is in this room right now. And really that's the most important thing to me is that uh, we wouldn't give up meeting together. And uh, because when two or more are gathered, then he's there in our midst. And so we trust that the Lord is in your living room, in your car, wherever you're at with you. Father, I thank you that right now you are here. That you love us far more than we have yet to love you. And so we're grateful for the passion of Christ. We're grateful for the passion uh, of the Holy Spirit. And we're grateful that you are here right now among us. We know that you want to speak. And so today, this morning, would you receive our worship? Would you receive our praise in Jesus' name?
Jesus, I just want to turn this to a time of prayer right now. That is, this song is the anthem of my heart, and I believe it's it should be the prayer of the saints right now. You are God and we are not. Yes. Um, and we, we love you, Lord, and we simply just want to go where you're going. Yes. We want to do what you're doing. And, man, we recognize there's so much change happening in this world right now. Our eyes are on you. I'm, I'm trying to take my eyes off of man and yeah. off of yeah. what's happening and what's changing and what's... Yeah. It's about you, Lord. Jesus. Yes, yes. Lord. And, and so we recognize in Scripture there's a lot of things that happened that were strange with the plagues in Israel. And, and But Moses had a way to keep his eyes on you and follow you and lead and be with you even before change came. I am thankful that right now, yes. Lord, in this very room and in the rooms of those in, 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 at home, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. And so I have absolute peace absolute rest in you you are my victory you are my banner you are my hope you are my love you are everything good that is in my life and I celebrate being known by you being found by you God I, I am so thankful for the cleansing and the washing and what you're doing and we're, we're thankful for what's happening in this world would you use us would you lead us yes would you yes, give us wisdom yes. to navigate through yes. these seasons? Would you put your spirit inside of us that you would use us to reach the lost? Father, I am thankful for what is even about to happen in this room this morning. For the word of the Lord that's coming. Would you speak to all of us? We long to hear from you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome everyone to the Wave Sunday service. It's so great to have you all here today. Here at the Wave, we have four values. The Word, living with generosity, relationships, and the Holy Spirit. I want to talk for a minute about God's Word. The Word. We need to read and meditate on God's Word daily. The Bible is pivotal for Christian faith, and it is the main source of our experiences with God. It is where we find our purpose and where we find inspiration for loving others. With everything that's happening in our country right now, we need to know that we are following the Lord now more than ever. This is the number one way God speaks to us. One, one way, way to get more connected, connected is to join one of our surf teams. teams. We, we have, have teams for everybody at every comfort level, level including a reader, a media, the band, nursery, kids workers, maintenance, outreach. All of our volunteers help us create an environment where people can meet and focus on Jesus. Serving is a great way to build relationships. And we believe it's not only for the benefit of others, but it helps us grow in our relationship with God. Over the summer, we're going to take a break from Connect Groups, but we're going to plan several events just to get together and have fun. If you want to make new friends, this is an easy and fun way to do it. For information about these aspects of our church, and to know what is going on each week, please download our app. Open the Play Store or App Store on your phone and search for The Way Lakeland to find the familiar black and green logo. You can check the app for event updates, sign up, how to donate, and tons of important information. You need the app. Thanks, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the service. I'm thinking about several things. One, I, I'm trying to keep my mind on the reality that Jesus is resurrected and he is alive. Because I think it's important, even in every season, that we remember that we walk with a God that speaks and walks alongside of us. 
And, uh, and I am so grateful that Jesus is alive and that he is here with us even right now and that he is speaking to the body of Christ this morning. And so I, we're doing, starting a new series this morning called The Awakening. And man, it's awakening me. And uh, I'm, I couldn't be more happy about that. Normally, Brady does announcements. Uh, really, the only announcement that I have this morning is, I'm going to ask all of you, this week, in your phones, if you would, um, put a reminder in your phone to read your scripture alone. There is nothing more important than people receiving Jesus' word by themselves, alone. But allowing the word of God to talk to you is probably the most important thing, because this is the number one way that God speaks. The number one way that God speaks. The number one way that God speaks. And so, He will speak to you through His Word. If you all have your cell phones, would you get them out for us? Uh, this is how we do attendance, and uh, especially for those of you at home, it's super important that we hear from you, and we know that you're with us, or that you're hearing, because we're praying for all of you right now. So if you would text in AWAKE1 to 777-3520, uh, and then if you've never texted before, someone's going to reply back to you saying, hey, we're so glad that you texted in and uh, ask you a few questions. You answer those questions and we have some gifts for you and we'll get to you. With that being said, I could not be more excited to start uh, this word with you guys today. Uh, we have a guest speaker, this is kind of a not a guest speaker, but a speaker <laughs> of the house, of this house. And so it's uh, my lovely bride, Teresa, would you come? Um, I couldn't allow you to speak without giving a little introduction uh, for you, and this is the part that everyone always hates, but um, I am an encourager, and so I am encouraged by this woman more than any human on the planet. On a daily basis, I have the pleasure of seeing the strongest woman of God I've ever met in my life. Consistent integrity, 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 and consistent, consistent, and, and you, and I get so convicted just watching you live your life the way you parent on a constant basis, pulling the kids into scripture and into prayer and pulling me into prayer and, in, and the way you live is a sermon to me. And so I'm thankful that I have already heard this message for 12 years. And so I love you. I'm love grateful you. for what's about to happen. You guys are blessed. Yeah. You can't make me cry before I have to speak. That's not really fair. But, well, thank you. I don't, is this microphone on? I'm not used to this, so we're good. All right, all right. I'm going to sit down because as much as I do believe that I have a word this morning for the, the body of Christ, I'm also a little nervous. So my legs are going to stay right here <laughs> for now. And um, so I am thankful because um, for a few different reasons. First of all, that we get to even speak the message of Jesus in this nation, in person and online, that is incredible privilege. Uh, I also am excited to, to start our new series, Awakening, because um, for those of you that don't know, Tim uh, has been asking me to speak and speak, and I keep shooting him down and like I'm not speaking, that's not what I do, I'm good to sit here and pray. Um, for the for the church and the message, but about a month ago, I really felt the Lord speaking to my heart and asking if I would, um, on another level, join Tim in partnership in pastoring and leading. And it's very humbling, and it's also exciting to be able to obey God even when you're afraid. <laughs> so. Um, I'm thankful because I know that this is the beginning of something new that the Lord wants to do, not only in this church, but in our ministry and our relationship and our family. And um, yeah, so here we go. So it's awakening. <laughs> and um, when I heard the, the title of this series, I began to think about what it means to be awakened. And I'm not sure if you guys have ever been awakened in the middle of the night. Um, but that's kind of what I drew from. I thought, you know, awakening to me reminds me of you're in a deep sleep or it's middle of the night and you hear like a loud sound. Or maybe if you're a parent, you have a child and you hear them call out for you or, or scream or something. Or um, I know as pastors, sometimes we get phone calls in the middle of the night. And 
No matter why the circumstance, it is generally a very similar reaction. And we are immediately up. Like there's no hitting the snooze button over and over again, right? Like we're immediately awake. Our eyes are pretty focused and we're looking to see what's our next course of action. Do I need to go find Maitley? Do I need to go um, you know, answer the phone and see who's calling or why? And I believe that this right now, I'm sensing that this is something similar that's happening to the body of Christ. And I don't think it's just for our church. I don't just think it's for the American church. I really believe that the Lord is awakening the body of Christ globally. I sense that he is immediately bringing us to a place where our eyes, our spiritual eyes are becoming focused. Our heart and our minds are becoming aware and open. And if you're like me, I'm saying, okay, God, what do you want to say? What's my course of action now? What do I do? And so this morning, um, if you've been a little bit overwhelmed or overcome by the state of our world, uh, I want to tell you this very, very clearly. Do not lose heart. Do not lose heart because the Spirit of God is awakening the body of Christ in a way that he is bringing our eyes into focus and he's empowering us for love and service. And I've come this morning just to hopefully give you a word of encouragement and um, And bring a word. So if you will, open your Bibles to Acts 2. We're going to read the first eight verses of Acts 2. And I'm going to pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is the solid ground underneath our feet. And when everything is shaken and sifted and stirred, your word remains true. And I thank you that your word is going to set out to accomplish what it was set forth. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would have your way, your agenda, not ours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to start. Acts 2, verse 1. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of tongues or fire appeared and settled on each of the believers. And everyone who was present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. And at that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard this loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear in their own language being spoken by all the believers. They were completely amazed, and they said, How can this be? These people are from Galilee. And yet, hearing them speaking in their, and yet we are hearing them speaking in our own native language. I asked the Lord why, you know, this verse. And if you were, maybe you were raised in church, maybe you were raised in, um, you know, some type of Assemblies of God background or something like that. And I'm sure if that's the case, that you've heard this passage of Scripture a lot of times. And so I want to ask you today to maybe one more time. Open your spiritual eyes through the different through a different lens and really dig in today and see maybe what the Spirit is saying to us specifically. And this um, scripture, this passage of scripture, this is really the first time that we are seeing the Holy Spirit moving on the early church. Uh, the Holy Spirit came upon the, the church, the early church, and he empowered them to fulfill the Great Commission. So the Great Commission was talked about in the last chapter of Matthew, and Jesus said this, go therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. Um, Teach the believers how to live. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you will be my witnesses to the world. And so in this time, you know, we see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is coming. He is empowering the believers for works of service and to to fill the Great Commission. But then when I was reading it, just while I was studying, the Holy Spirit, to me, began to show me a second layer that I had never really paid much attention to. And it's so interesting, in verse 7, it said, well, let's go to actually verse 6. 
it says, talking about Jews who had come, they were, there was Jews from all over. Um, and in verse 6 it says, everyone came running. They, in verse 7, were amazed. And they asked this question, how can this be? And what I see here is not only the, belief, the Lord, the Holy Spirit was doing a work in the believers, but the Holy Spirit actually was doing a similar, a, a, another work in unbelievers. He was stir, the Holy Spirit was stirring questions. He was stirring curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. He was preparing their hearts yeah. for what he had just given the believers. Yeah. So it's literally twofold. Things are happening at the same time yeah. because the Holy Spirit is working and moving. He is stirring love and boldness. He's stirring um, a compelling for works and believers. Yeah. And he's preparing hearts to receive that same message yeah. in unbelievers. Yeah, cool. And so I get a sense today that the Holy Spirit is doing the same thing here now in our world. And so, um, so I want to stop here and kind of take a look at the, the second chapter of Acts and see um, what are some similar, what, what were the believers doing and how did they uh, receive the Holy Spirit? How did they usher in this empowerment from the Lord? And the first thing I see is that they were in obedience. The new believers, they had left whatever they were doing, their old lives, and, and they were obedient. Jesus said in Acts 1 to go to the upper room and wait, and wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will be baptized now with the Holy Spirit. And so they did. They went. They left whatever they had been doing, and they went, and they waited in the upper room. And if you read later, it says that they began to pray and 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 really intercede and seek God. And I was thinking like, man, if I told my kids to come into a room and like, let's pray, and there's an indefinite time. Jesus just said, go there, and in a few days, you know, you'll receive this gift. Wow. My kids are like looking for that, me, Tim, me. And <laughs> we're looking for the iPad. We're looking for like the next set of, of yeah. music that we can listen to. We're looking for something to like keep us occupied, right? But they just went and they interceded and they set their face to, to receive and be obedient to what Jesus had commanded. Awesome. The second thing in kind of partnership was that is that they believed what Jesus said. They believed that what he said was going to happen. And can you imagine? Jesus just said, wait for some days and you'll receive. And so I believe it was about 10 days. They're waiting. They're waiting. And if it was me. I'd be like, um, this is day three. Um, um, have we received it? Like, did you get something? I got, I got something. I got okay, something. so we're yeah. good. We're good, right? This is it. This is the gift. Yay! Um, but they believed what Jesus said, and they just kept going. That's awesome. They held to the promise yes. that what God said was true. The next thing, obviously, is they were filled. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. So like we've talked about, they had an empowerment from the Spirit of God uh, for works of service. But then, the last thing is, is after they were filled, they were moved to action. Yeah. And it's so beautiful, because as I was studying the book of Acts, I read chapter 1 and chapter 2 and kind of sensed what the Lord was speaking and what he wanted me to share, but I just kept reading. And I've read through the book of Acts so many times, but this time I'm reading through the book of Acts, and I'm seeing pattern after pattern after pattern. And the pattern was is that believers were filled. They experienced the Holy Spirit. They were witnesses. Jesus said, be my witnesses. You don't have to be my preachers. You don't have to be, you just tell what I'm doing, right? And so the believers experienced the Holy Spirit. And then after that, unbelievers ask questions. And so it's not like it's forced. It's, it's very organic what's happening in the book of Acts. They're experiencing something and unbelievers are like, wait, what's happening there? Yeah. How can this be? This Tell us how this happened. How did you just raise that man from the dead? How did you just re heal that? How did you just set that pe those people yeah. free? What's happening? They're asking. They're coming to us. us. Yeah. Yeah, they are. The next thing is, is that the believers then really grasp their opportunity and they just begin to share the gospel. And the reason they're able to share the gospel with so much power is because the Holy Spirit has equipped them and empowered them yeah. for the works of the service and ministry. And then two things happen. Either one, 
The unbelieving world receives the message of Jesus and their hearts have been softened and prepared to receive and they jump on board with the church or the unbelieving world totally rejects the message of Jesus and they generally bring some type of you know persecution or put them in prison or whatever, but there wasn't a lot of in-between in the book of Acts. When I look at the, the early church, there wasn't a middle people-pleasing, we're gonna uh, you know, do this. It, it, there was a very definitive, yeah. this is what we believe and what we're standing for and this is not. So why today did I sense that maybe this is what the Lord would have me share? And I believe that our world today is asking questions. Yeah. I believe that your friends, yeah. your coworkers, your family, they're all looking for answers. Right. And if you go on social media for like 30 seconds, you can testify that everyone wants to know, or everybody is searching, I guess is a better way to say. They're searching for you know, what's happening politically, what's happening economically, what's happening here and here and here. And, and sometimes I will say, the challenge is, is that we begin to communicate, maybe not necessarily the message of Jesus, but our own voice, yeah. right? Doesn't the, doesn't the world tell us that, you know, we need to use our voice, and we need to speak our truth, wow. and we need to share our stance wow. on how we believe about things. But when I look in the scriptures, all I see is that our message is Jesus Christ, yeah. Him crucified, yeah. Him resurrected. It is no longer I that lives, but Christ yeah. that lives inside of me. Wow. And I want to bring us to um, a scripture in 1 Corinthians 2. If, if you want to turn there, it's verses 2 through 4. And it says this, Paul, I, res I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and great fear. Anybody relate? Oh, yeah. Weakness, great fear? Yeah. All right, that's how I'm coming. I'm coming with weakness and great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise or persuasive words. Hello. <laughs> not with wise or persuasive words, but it came with a demonstration of the Holy Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom or understanding but on the power of God and to salvation. We are not called to preach our message. The Holy Spirit is not preparing hearts of our family members, our coworkers, unbelieving world for our message. That's why you, there's so much conflict. There's so yeah. much uh, d discord because the Holy Spirit hasn't prepared them for our message. He has prepared them yeah. for the message of Jesus Christ Amen. and Him crucified and us to be His witnesses of what He is saying and what He's doing. Amen. And so why are so many of us, I would ask, not seeing or walking in the fullness of what Jesus has invited us to? Why are we not living, some of us, in the freedom that Christ has already paid for on the cross? Wow. And I'm going to read this because I, I, when I was praying, I did believe that this um, word is from the Lord. I said, church, this is a defining moment for our future. I sense that the Lord is awakening his church again. We know that the scripture is not only a historical document of what has happened, but a blueprint of how we should live. So I want to invite you to look in the scriptures with me about how we are to follow what the early church church did. That's awesome. So the first thing is, if you're like me, I like, like I'm type A, if you don't know, if you don't know me, if you know me, you know I'm type A. <laughs> Lists, I like practical, hands-on, Lord, what do I do and how do I respond to what your word is? And so the first thing that I saw that we've talked about is obedience. The, the early church, the believers obeyed. And now, please don't hate me because this is not generally something that is talked about in a lot of churches, but I believe our first step of obedience is repentance. Yes. I really do. I believe that there is, um, there are things in our life yeah. where, where God may not be pleased and it's easier to tune God out 
than to sit and say, Lord, I am so sorry. Like, God, I, God, I need you. And I want you. I want you more than I want anything else. And so this morning, I felt the Lord asked me to be honest and vulnerable. And so I'm going to tell you, um, we were praying and fasting for this series. Uh, and the very first day I, was a day of repentance for me. I was just, I just told the Lord, God, I repent for my lack of faith. And I will say that I have faith. And I will hope that I have faith. And I will believe even sometimes that I have faith. But when I'm on day like five, six, seven, waiting for something that I don't know, I start to like make it happen, right? We start to be our own saviors. I start to do it. Um, the second thing is addiction. I had to ask the Lord and repent for an addiction. Um, no, I'm not addicted to alcohol or drugs or pornography, but I find myself on my phone way too much. I can't put it down sometimes. I have business on my phone, so do I need to use it? Yeah. Do I think that's a problem? No. But do I find myself sometimes scrolling when my kids are right in front of me? Or when I know the Lord is calling me to himself. Yep. And it's easier sometimes for us to be distracted and to numb than to actually dive into the secret place of the Most High God. That is awesome. Yes. Yes. That is awesome. So I just want to ask you, what are some things, or are there some things or areas that you need to repent of? That's the bottom rung. That's the bottom rung. The next thing the believers did is they believed the Word of God. And if you don't know, you know, if you don't know me, if you do know me, I love the Word of God. This has been concrete under my feet for many, many, many years now. And the believers the early, of the early church did, they believed that the Word of God, that what Jesus spoke was true. And I think that is something that today we need to really lean into. I don't know how long we're going to be able to have the Word of God, maybe for the rest of our lives, maybe not. But I know that committing this into our spirit, memorizing, teaching our children so that they can teach their children's children the Word of God. Do we believe that God is who He said He is and He can do what He said He will do? And in that, do I then believe who I am God says I am? And I can do what God said I can do. And there's a verse in Amos, and they're going to put it up on the screen. Um, but this is from Amos 8, 11. It said, there, the time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not of bread and water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Wow. And I... I heard what Tim said about reading our reading the word and if you have any kind of church background you may have heard like we read the word we read the Bible and so we're a good Christian but I'm telling you man it's so much more than that especially in this time when people are telling you use your voice speak your truth the truth that we speak is the word of God and, the, and, and there's scripture that says that the word of God will not return void. Yes. The word of God is living and it's active and it is sharp and it's going to divide some things. It's going to call us on the carpet as believers. But the other thing is that there's power in the word of God. Yeah. Jesus was the word. Wow. And in that, we have, we have great, great hope and great authority. The, the third thing that the believers experienced is obviously the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, go to the upper room and wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit that I will give you. And there's a verse uh, in John 16, 7. And I, and I love this because I, I know that the Bible, again, sets a precedence for our everyday living. And Jesus when he was with his disciples, they were saying, please stay with us. I would want Jesus to stay with me, right? Like, I don't want him to go. And he says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate, another version says helper, 
won't come. If I do, though, I will send him to you. And so I want to share, when I was a young person, I was at a service similar to this. Uh, there was a man speaking. I don't remember him or any really part of this message. But at the end of the message, he asked if there was anybody that wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And my heart started beating fast. And I just knew in my heart that that was for me. And so as a young person, I walk up and I go on the left side of the stage. And I sit on the second step. Sorry, you guys. I'm trying not to be like so emotional <laughs> but it was it was a gift that I that I received and I'm sitting on the second step and nobody's praying for me nobody laid hands on me nobody spoke anything over me it was just me and the Lord and I said Lord I want your Holy Spirit I want you to fill me I want to be different than my friends I want my life to be marked for you and the Holy Spirit is a seal. I want me, I want to be set apart for you. And in that moment, I will tell you, he filled me, he empowered me, he did things in my life. And outside of obviously salvation, that gift has been the most significant gift I have ever received. I never turned my back on the Lord. I, I in hard, obviously there's been hard times but in hard times, that's what I call, that was my constant fallback, constant fallback. And the Bible says that, that the Holy Spirit is many things. And in this day, and in this hour, with all that's going on, we, church, need the Holy Spirit more than ever. Yeah. And to be real, and to be activated, and to be in power in our life. This is what the Holy Spirit is. If you, if you... It, Poor Holy Spirit. Like, he has kind of a funny name, right? Like, the Holy Spirit. That's a little bit, you know, if you're not raised in church, it's a little bit interesting. Um, so I want to break down what he is and what his offices are, that he, what the, he holds. He's a comforter. He comforts you when you don't understand what's going on or why your kids are this way or, or your marriage is, is falling apart. He's a comforter. He convicts of sin. He gives us truth. He is a spirit of truth and understanding. He gives wisdom. How many of you need wisdom? I need wisdom. I don't know which way to turn. Right now, everything is upside down, I feel like. And I need some supernatural wisdom. I need to know which way to go and how to, how to train my kids and how to pastor a church. And I, I need wisdom. I need leadership. I need to know, like, really who's friend and who's foe. Right? I need, I need a confidence and assurance knowing that, that even though the, the sea might be rocky, I'm, I'm holding on to the hand of the one who will get me to the other side. He is power. And that is the last thing that I want to, um, to talk about. I want to bring it back to this. Right? When the Holy Spirit was given to the early church, two things were happening. The first is that the believers were empowered for service. Yeah. Unbelievers were prepared to receive, and they met. And I believe that that is, is where we are as a church. And I want to encourage you, when I was praying about this specific message, online too, I'm, I'm, ta I'm, ta I'm coming for you. Uh, I believe that there are things in some of your hearts and new levels that God has put in there that I don't know if, this is a new level, okay? So I'm, I'm receiving as I'm speaking. There are new levels, new ministries, new ideas, new businesses, things that God has put in your heart that for whatever reason, you haven't yet stepped into. He is calling us to action. He is calling you to minister to people that we can't minister to. He is calling you to love people I can't love. He is calling us to different places. And so this morning, I pray that you would receive freedom, that you would receive the Holy Spirit, 
that you would receive an empowerment to fulfill the Great Commission, that you would receive what Jesus talked about, that you would go forth into, forth into all of the nations, missions, ministry, whatever. Maybe God's called you to ministry, and you have a really good job. It's not me. That's the Holy, the whole, you and the Holy Spirit work that out. But I'm just saying, he has called us into all nations to proclaim the good news. The good news. We have good news. Jesus is not... Jesus does not need to defend himself. He is the gospel. He is good news. He has laid down his life and he has sent his Holy Spirit to empower us and to awaken, awaken the church. And so this morning, um, I just want to read you one last scripture out of Exodus. And Rachel, would you come? Exodus 9, 16 says this, but for this purpose, I have raised you up to show you my power and to spread my fame to all the earth. My version says, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. Wow. Wow. I'm excited. There is a sifting and there is a shaking, but there is a very real spirit of God that will call you, lead you, and guide you, and empower you to share. And so if you will, um, go ahead and close your eyes. I'm just going to, and if you're online at home, I'm so thankful that you, I really am thankful that you took some time out of your day yeah. to meet with us. Together, as a church, the believers devoted themselves to the Lord's teaching and the apostles' teaching of the word. And so I believe that there are two groups of people this morning that the Lord is really speaking to. The first is going to be the top layer. Maybe you're a believer, and you believe God's word, and you're a Christian, and you love Jesus. But you're kind of um, feeling like there's more. And you need to be empowered and filled with the Holy Spirit. If that's you today, just like me, you don't even need somebody to touch you. You just need to invite the Holy Spirit into your heart to change you. Receive him, receive his power, receive all of the things he is. Comfort, help, wisdom, conviction. And if that's you, I want to pray for you. If you will raise your hand, if you need a fresh touch, not maybe being filled with the Spirit 10 years ago, but a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit, a fresh infilling of the Spirit, I just want you to raise your hand. It's so important for daily living, daily walking. Thank you, guys. Thank you at home. The second is, the second group of people is that second layer. Maybe you have felt um, your heart racing. You're not entirely sure what this is, but Jesus came into the human existence and he walked among man and he was nailed to a cross and killed for our salvation, for, for us. And he was raised to new life and empowered so that we can spend eternity with Jesus. And that is the best news of all. And so if you would like to, to receive Jesus and the Holy Spirit, all in the same together, I'll ask that you raise your hand. And at home, I want you to raise your hand. If you're in your car, I want you to raise your hand. If you're in your bathroom watching on your phone, I want you to raise your hand. And I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for your word. And I thank you that the message of God does not return void. And it sets out and accomplishes what its purposes are. And so, Father, I thank you for allowing us the opportunity to receive 
salvation and your Holy Spirit. And I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning who receive you, God. I ask that you would lead them and guide them in all truth. That you would um, just pour out your spirit. times where I've not followed, I repent. Yes, Lord, yes. I'm sorry that I'm weak and sometimes selfish. My heart wants to follow. And I will follow you. Make it clear. In Jesus' name.
I told you she's stupid good, right? Oh man, is that my arm little one? Yeah. I'm sorry to everyone that I have to speak next week. <laughs> it was so powerful. Oh, um, listen. Uh, when she said we, we heard this 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 word from the Lord the same the same time the same day uh, about how the world is um, is is asking questions and the Lord is moving on the church and and we have to know that what they're asking we have answers for. And I was at Lowe's this week and then I saw it. And I, I saw it in people's eyes. I was wearing one of these stupid things. And I hate them. I hate them. I hate wearing them at church. I hate wearing them in public. I hate them. But what I realized is that this is such a gift. Yeah. Here's what I mean. Everyone's talking about it. A couple of weeks ago, it was a different narrative. And the weeks before that, it was a different narrative. And the week that, it was a different narrative. And this week, it's these masks. And next week, it will be something different. And I was at Lowe's, and I'm wearing one of these masks, and I'm standing in line, and everyone around me is wearing them. And I'm thinking, this is so weird. Where are we right now? What is happening? And I realized... Everyone is thinking the same thing. And so, what I know is that God is healing the nation. And if I put God's word in my mouth, and not my own word in my mouth, I have an answer that can create an eternal difference in someone's life forever. This, though you hate it, though you love it, though you don't like it, though I don't know, who cares how you feel, for once, die to yourself. Live for Jesus. It's not about how I feel or what I like or what I don't like. It's about eternity. It's about Jesus. Let this be a talking point this week. It can bring an eternal difference in someone's life. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you're here. And I thank you that you're there. And you are the only one that can be everywhere at the same time because you alone are God. And you are doing things that no one can do on this earth right now. Lead us like no one else can to an awakening. In Jesus' glorious name and all God's people say, Amen. I love you. Talk to you soon.